First, give an honor to God and to my loving pastor, my loving, gracious, smart, intelligent, everything pastor. <laughs> and uh, to my his wife, who is beautiful, intelligent, and smart, everything, first lady. And, you know, to my entire family, my sister and my, the mothers here. You know, I'm really grateful that when I was little, I had the opportunity to sit in church on Sundays. And they taught us kids. The first song I learned was, It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And I'm really grateful that the adults had the mindset to teach us children how to uh -huh. sing that song because many times it's me who's yeah. standing in the need of prayer. Yeah. And while I, 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 I strive hard to make myself available to other people and to have God use me as a vessel in any way he sees fit is better than anything I'm going to do, um, you know, sometimes it is my turn. You know, sometimes the the hurt and the pain and the, uh -huh. the heaviness is on me. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, um, and even in spite of that time, I'm still needed to show up for somebody oh, else. Right. And, um, you know, I share with Pastor on Thursday night, one of my best friends um, had a big major surgery. And I, and I told her I would be at the hospital when she... But I said, by the time you come out of surgery, I'll be off work and I'll, I'll be there. You'll see yeah. me when you come out. And um, as God would have it, when they were bringing her down the hall, I was already there. And um, she's the kind of person that, um, you know, I was, they kind of stopped her in front of me getting her bed ready. And so I was patting her hand and just kind of stroking her. Yeah. And she's the kind of person that, and this is her. She moved my hand and put my hand down so she could pet my hand. <laughs> and, and I had to tell her, I said, stop, I'm pet you. You got to ask my turn to pet you. And she just smiled and, you know, she couldn't talk to me because she was, you know, still under sedation. She's kind of semi coming in and out. And, you know, I know she was in a lot of pain, but... You know, that's who she is. That's who her spirit is. She's the kind that would stop you from caring about her so she could care about you. And so, you know, whenever any of us see somebody who has a heart that big in any kind of pain or any kind of turmoil and struggle, we're touched deeper than we usually are. And so, on Thursday night when I left the hospital, I cried all the way home, but I cried tears of joy oh, and yeah. te tears of thanksgiving oh, that, yeah. Thank you know, you. I was able to be there like yeah. I said I would when she yeah. came out of surgery. And, you know, I was able just to stroke her head and, and just hug her and just, you know, pray over her and just, you know, touch her and just give God thanks that... You know, I, I could, I, I'm not so self-centered and so selfish oh, that, right you know, I, I can't think about nobody but myself. Oh, right yeah. and, um, and she's got a daughter, and her daughter's the only child. And, you know, I still have my mother, and I know that I walked through a lot with my own mother. And I know that I would not have fared as well as I did if it wasn't for my brother and my nieces and my children and my grandchildren. Right. And I thought about my friend's daughter who, who doesn't have another sibling. She has other family members, but she don't have another sister or another brother. And, you know, sometimes being an only child is not the easiest thing in the world. And so myself and my other friends, we, we made a decision to show up for her and, you know, Amen. carry her and, you know, tell her to go home and go to bed and we sit at the hospital. And, you know, we're sketching Amen. out times that we're going to let her know we're going to be here this time so yeah. you don't have to be. And we're not asking her to call us if you need us. Yeah, we're right. telling her right. we're, what we're going to do right. so that she will trust that she can go home and get some rest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're telling her to eat so she can have some nourishment so that she don't end up sick. And, yeah. You know, just <clears throat> just to be able, yeah. you know, to do those kinds of things for somebody else oh, is right the now. gift. Yeah. You know, that's that's the blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, all of you guys know that I work in healthcare. I've been working in healthcare for a long time, and 
You know, when we're in surgery and in intensive care units, sometimes we're like completely gone. Yeah. yeah. You know, our our respiratory systems have been relaxed to the state of possibly not waking up again. Uh -huh. Our brain functions are down and you know everything that makes us tick is down. Mm -hmm. And we're in the hands of man yeah. mm -hmm. until man revs us up back up again. Now we rev back up again because the Lord is That's not right. finished with us. Sure, you know the Lord wants us here to do yeah. some more things. Yeah. But there's a fine time in there that we're kind of in limbo. Some of us wake up out of those kinds of states, but some of us don't. You know, we don't, we're, we don't know when our time comes. We just know when we wake up, it's another day for us to live. So, um, you know, I, I can't tell you how grateful I am for the outpour of all the love and support here in my church family today. Because I know that th there's so much here that not just my friend in the ICU right now. That whole ICU at Kaiser Hospital yeah. right now is being lifted up. Right. Every patient right. in the right. ICU at Kaiser right now right. is being lifted up. Right. Every patient right yeah. now, every oh. doctor, every yeah. nurse, yeah. every uh, radiology technician, every respiratory technician, this is, a, this is more than a love love for my friend. That's why I know this is reaching everybody who's on that unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just want, you know, you know, I, I, I'm just grateful. Uh -huh. I'm just grateful that yeah. when it's our turn to show up for somebody else, that that's what we do. Yeah. That's Christianity in its finest. Sure that's the spirit of Christ in every single one of us. Uh -huh. If we don't get that, the, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot about when the Lord was in the, the Garden of Gethsemane all by himself. Yeah. And having to face the fact that, you know, he wasn't going to be able to do what he wanted to do like he wanted to do. And how lonely that must have been. Yeah. But he still answered the call on his life. Yeah. He still gave. Yeah. freely and willingly right. and those of us who profess this way of life as ours that's our function All right. if we can't love past our own selves if we can't love past the traumas and the problems and the issues of this world we we've, we've not yet answered our call All right. and so we're our time is short like pastor said our time is short we I've been here over almost 60 years I'm not gonna live another 60 years and that's okay because every day I'm living every day like it's a 60 year stretch because that's what I'm called to do and so you know I'm just really grateful this morning for my entire church family for you know, I, I wouldn't, if I wasn't spiritually fit, I couldn't show up for my friend right now. Right. And I'm spiritually fit because I'm a member of this church. Amen. I'm spiritually fit because I have the kind of pastor when I pick up the phone and call him, you know, I'm not in a sea of people and he don't know who I am. He's like, oh, Sister Thomas, which one are you? Oh, uh, you know, we got thousands of people in our church. We reach millions. We reach millions. But when I pick up my pastor, he knows my voice. I don't even have to say my name. That's right. Well, that's God's gift to me. Amen. That's the Lord's oh, grace God. and mercy on my life. Yeah. Um, you know, I just ask him for prayers for my friend, Amen. her family. I didn't say her name because I didn't ask her. Could I? <laughs> and I, you know, as a professional, I'm a professional social worker. I, I got trained in the um, and working in what we call anonymity and working what we call privacy it's a HIPAA thing you know but I'm bound by some things even when I'm not at work I'm bound by some professional codes that I have to live by I don't have the luxury of breaking people's anonymity and I have the luxury about talking about things in detail but I can generally say everybody in any ICU in this city or any other city needs our prayers every family member who's sitting in a waiting room right now waiting to get a verdict or waiting yeah. to hear what the outcomes are. Every niece, every nephew, every daughter needs our prayer. Yeah. Every doctor, every nurse, every yeah. you know, radio, every somebody in the pharmacy so they don't distribute the wrong That's amount right. of medicine yeah. needs yeah. our prayer. Yeah. 
So we should always include everybody we possibly can in prayer. I thank my entire church family. I have everything I need to make it for the rest of the week. No matter what happens at, at, at my friend's hospital room. I have everything I need. And, and Satan, I'm going to say this, I'm going to sit down. Satan, when I woke up this morning, this is how crafty he is. He said, ooh, you had a rough week and, you know, you're tired. You didn't uh -huh. eat yesterday. You haven't got no sleep. You probably should just sleep in the day. Man, I jumped up. I jumped out the bed and I called my pastor right then. I said, oh, uh-uh, not me. <laughs> you ain't cheating. And look what he would have cheated me out of. Uh -huh. for me to live it. And I thank everybody. I'm taking all this love and all this support to my friends. I see you bed. And I'm going to pour it on her. And she is going to be better. She's better right now. Thank you.